Right, good day, grade 11 mathematics learners, and welcome to our third session for our June examination um, preparation for paper one. Right, so in our, next, uh, in our next question, we're going to have a look at functions and graphs. So in the first two sessions, we mainly did algebra and then number patterns. So for question five, it states here, given f of x equals negative three over x plus over x plus 2 and then plus 1, and g of x equals 2 to the exponent of negative x minus 4. This g of x is an exponential function, and this f of x is a hyperbolic function. Then for 5.1, one mark, we need to determine f of negative 3. This means that we must substitute the negative 3 in the place for x in f. So f of negative 3 equals negative 3 over, this would be an x, but now it's negative 3 plus 2, and then plus 1, that you should do on your calculator, and you'll find an answer of 4. So you just, just get one mark here for the answer of 4. And then 5.2, two marks, determine x if g of x is equal to 4. Remember, so we're going to make our g of x which is the exponential functions here. The left-hand side, we're going to set this equal to 4, and then we're going to solve for x. So 4 equals 2 to the exponent of negative x minus 4. And then we can move that 4 to the other side. We are trying to solve for x here. So 4 plus 4 equals 8, equals 2 to the exponent of negative x. 8, you can rewrite it as 2 to the 3, equals 2 to the negative x. The bases are the same. There's an equal sign between them. Therefore, you can equate the exponents. 3 will equal to negative x. Therefore, x equals negative 3. You get a mark there for that initial substitution for 4 in the place of g of x. And you'll get a mark there for the answer of x is equal to negative 3. 5.3. Write down the asymptotes of f. Two marks. Right, so we know here is f, it's a hyperbolic function. It does have two asymptotes. It has one horizontal one and one vertical one. Right, so the question is, what can I not put in here for x? Otherwise, I'll have an asymptote where it's undefined. I cannot put in a negative 2. Therefore, x equals negative 2, there's an asymptote. And then our constant there, the plus 1, that is y which is the Q, Y is equal to 1, there's the other asymptote. So one mark for X is equal to negative 2, and one mark for Y equals 1. 5.4, write down the range of G, one mark. So if you'll sketch this, um, where Y equals negative 4, there's a horizontal asymptote there. So we cannot include that, but the graph will lie above it. So the range will be y is strictly greater than the negative 4. Or you can write it in this notation here, one mark. And then 5.5, the terminal coordinates of x and y intercepts of f, five marks. So for 5.5, if you want the x intercept, you must make y equals to 0. This is f now, our hyperbolic function. So 0 equals negative 3 over x plus 2 plus 1. You move the constant 1 to the other side. Negative 1 equals negative 3 over x plus 2. Now you can cross multiply this negative 1 will times with this x plus 2. So you'll have a negative x minus 2 equals negative 3. Take this 2 to the other side. So you add 2. Negative x equals negative 3 plus 2. That's negative 1. Therefore, x equals 1. So we have 1x intercept at 1, 0. If you want the y intercept, you must make x equals to 0. So y equals negative 3 over 0 plus 2 plus 1. On your calculator, that will equate to negative a half. So your y intercept is at 0, semicolon, negative a half. So you get a mark here where you set x equals to 0, the substitution. And then you get a mark for the y equals negative a half. Then you also get a mark here for making the y equals to 0 for the simplification and then solving x equals to 1. So there you have your 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 marks. And then 5.6, 
Determine the equation of the axis of symmetry of f which has a negative gradient. Leave your answer in the form of y equals mx plus c, two marks. Yes, it has two axes of symmetry. We're just going to write down the one. It's y equals negative x plus the c. Remember, it's always this for the negative gradient. Our job is just to find this value of c. Now, where the asymptotes will intersect, that's where our gradient, our axis of symmetry will also go through. That's why we have this point here at 5.3, the asymptotes of f, negative 2 semicolon 1. So the x is negative 2 and the y is 1. So 1 equals negative, negative 2 plus c. So 1 equals 2 plus c, so c equals negative 1. Therefore, y equals negative x minus 1. One mark for the substitution, 1 in for the y and negative 2 in for the x. And then our final answer in the form of y equals mx plus c, y equals negative x minus 1. And then it says here for 5.7, 6 marks, sketch the graphs of f and g on the same set of axes. Clearly show all the intercepts with the axes and the asymptotes. So for f, our hyperbolic function, remember there was a negative, our a is a negative. So it will be in quadrant 2 and in quadrant 4. That's where our arms will lie. So here we have the x-axis. We have a y-axis. We already worked out its x-intercept. The x-intercept was at 1, 0. So that's the point right there. We already worked out its y-intercept. That was at 0, semicolon, negative 1. So its y-intercept is there. And then we also have its asymptotes that we've worked out x equals negative 2 and y equals 1. Here's x. x is equal. Pardon. Uh, x is equal to negative 2 and y is equal to 1. So x is equal to negative 2. That's here. And then y is equal to 1. Remember your arms will come very close to your asymptotes. But it will not touch it. Neither will it go through it. But it gets very close to it. So our first arm here in quadrant form will start here, and then it will go through your y-intercept, go through your x-intercept, and get very close to our asymptote here. And the second arm, we're just going to draw here in quadrant 2. Remember, it tries its best to get very close to these asymptotes. So you're going to get a mark here for including your asymptotes. You're going to get a mark here for both of the arms of your hyperbolic function. And you get a mark here for the x and the y intercepts that we have already worked out. We've just indicated them here on the graph. And then for g, we know g is our exponential function. So we know it has one horizontal asymptote. And that's where y equals negative 4. That's here. And then it also goes through the uh, x-axis. Its x-intercept here is negative 2 semicolon 0. And here is its y-intercept at 0, semicolon, negative 3. So our arm is going to look like this. Goes from left to right downwards through our x-intercept, through our y-intercept, and gets very close to our asymptotes. So you get a mark there for the asymptote, mark there for the x-intercept. You've indicated it's at negative 2, 0. And a mark there for the y-intercept, which is at 0, semicolon, negative 3. That's six marks in total. Right now, here's our last one. Question six. The diagram below shows the graph of, this is a parabola, a quadratic function. f of x equals negative x squared minus x plus 6. And g, g of x is mx plus c. That's a straight line. And then a, which is at negative 2 semicolon 4, is a point of intersection of the graphs of f and g, as indicated in the diagram. 6.1, 4 marks. Determine the x-intercepts of f. f is the parabola. So if you want the x-intercept, you must set negative x squared minus x plus 6 equal to 0. Remember, you make the y equals to 0 and solve for x. So we move these terms to the other side to get a positive x squared plus x minus 6 equals 0. That you can factorize into two brackets, x plus 3 times x minus 2 equals 0. So x equals negative 3 or x is equal to 2. So we know that b is at the negative 3, 0, and the c is at the 2, 0. 
You get a mark there for, for making your y equals to zero. A mark there for your standard form. That's a x squared plus x minus six equals zero. You get a mark for both factors. And you get a mark for stating b is at negative three zero and c is at two zero. 6.2, write down the equation of axis of symmetry of f. You have two options. You can either find halfway between our x-intercepts, and then you can write the equation like that, or you can use the turning point x-coordinate formula, x equals negative b over 2a. So remember, x will equal negative, and our b there was negative 1, so it's negative 1 over 2 times a, and our a was negative 1. So that is x equals negative a half. So negative a half here, there would be our axis of symmetry. And remember, it is vertical and it goes through our x-axis. So you get a mark there for the method and you're going to get a mark there for the answer. 6.3, determine the range of f. Yes, it's from the turning point and everything below, but we need that y value of the turning point. We already have its x value. So we sub the x value back into the original function. So f of negative a half. So it's negative bracket a half squared minus a half plus six. So it's at six and a quarter. So the turning point is a negative half semicolon six and a quarter. So it's from that point all the way down. So you can write it in, in this form if you want to. It's from negative infinity uh, semicolon six and a quarter. Or you can write it y is less than or equal to six and a quarter. So you're going to get a mark there for the y value of the turning point, and you're going to get two marks there for the answer. And then 6.4, write down the equation of g in the form of y equals mx plus c, three marks, right? So we know d goes to that point there. D uh, is also the y-intercept of our parabola. It's also the y-intercept of our straight line, and it's also a point on the straight line. So we can just find its um, gradient. Right, so we know that our c value will be 6. We just need to find the gradient. So need to find the gradient. You must say y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Remember, that's the point there, 0 semicolon 6. So it will be 6 minus the 4, y2 minus y1, all over x2, that's 0, minus x1, so it's minus negative 2, then you'll get 1. So we know it is y equals 1x plus c. You're going to get a mark for the gradient of 1. You're going to get a mark for answer y equals 1x plus c. And you're going to get a mark there for the coordinates of d. Remember, d is also the y-intercept of your parabola, and you can read it off. It's the constant there. Right, and then 6.5, write down the average gradient between the points A and D, one mark. So between the points A, there's point A and D, obviously it's that gradient of our straight line that we worked out, so that's just one. So you get an answer there. One tick mark for the answer. And then 6.6, .6, determine the equation of H. H is a reflection of F about the x-axis, and then translate it, so this is a transformation on it. Then translate the three units to the right. Leave your answer in the form of h of x, which is equal to a bracket x plus p squared, and then plus q, three marks. That's in the turning point form, completing the square form. So for 6.6, .6, we need to complete the square there, and it's going to be a um, it's going to be a reflection, and it's going to move three units to the right. So for 6.6, .6, we're going to say f of x equals negative. And then x plus 1, x plus a half, and then squared plus 25 over 4. So if it moves 3 units to the right, we're going to say, we're going to say they're minus 3. So h of x, that's, that's f of x written in, um, written a turning point or completing the square form. So h of x equals x plus a half minus 3 squared minus 25 over 4. So h of x equals x minus 5 over 2 squared minus 25 over 4. So you get a mark there for f of x in that completing the square form. You're going to get a mark here for x minus 5 over 2 squared for h of x. And you're going to get a mark there for uh, minus 25 over 4. 
And then the last one, write down the values of x for which f of x is greater than 0. Well, if you look at our graph, we had our x-intercepts, which is at b and c. They're asking where is it strictly above it. So between these two values, negative 3 and our 2, it's going to be strictly above it, but not including it. So that's why we write negative 3 is less than x, which is less than 2, 2 marks. Thank you very much for your time, grade 11s. Bye-bye.